So hello and welcome all to the Nalcon webinar series. My name is Harshil. I'm a part of Nalcon team and your host for the day. Nalcon Annual Conference is a unique platform for security companies and evangelists to showcase their research and technology to the community. We have been running webinars for a while now, and this upcoming month there will be some interesting. related to industrial control system in March 2020. Do check out uh, the details in our chat window. Today we have with us Anatoly Sisherman and he is going to present a talk on robust website fingerprinting through the cache occupancy channel. I welcome him on behalf of all of us. Anatoly is a PhD student at Ben Gurion University of Israel. He specializes in machine learning and big data analytics. His interest in hardware side channel attacks and machine learning algorithms. Before we go ahead, a uh, quick instruction for the audience. Uh, our today's talk duration is about 30 minutes. And after that, we will have a question answer session. So you all can ask your question using chat option after the talk. Also, I request you to please keep your mic on mute during the session. So Anatoly, I welcome you again and the stage is yours. Thank you. Okay, thank you for the introduction. Um, I'm Anatoly, um, I'll talk with you about robust website fingerprinting through the cache occupancy channel. Uh, this is a joint work with Loktanlan, Yorden, Yosef, Pratik, Yossi, and Yuval from all of these uh, places, universities. So uh, first of all, let's talk about uh, privacy in the web. Actually, uh, nowadays, uh, people who surf in the internet uh, through the HTTPS might think that they are secured because their data is encrypted. But what about their privacy? Network eavesdropper can easily monitor the source and the destination of the network traffic, see which website the victim surfs, and then it might reveal uh, secrets of the victim, such as political beliefs, affiliation, and sexual orientation. And in some uh, regions in the world, uh, it might be uh, dangerous. So uh, therefore, several privacy enhancing tools were developed, such as Tor Network, that does not expose the source and the destination of the network traffic. And it takes more actions to protect users' privacy. Several works taken measures against Tor Network, and our work uh, presents one of them. So before we go deep into the attack, let's uh, look on several websites. We have here uh, Google, AliExpress, BBC, uh, NineGag. Uh, all of these, although we cannot see the differences between their websites in encrypted traffic, they still have different uh, videos, images, and scripts running in a different order. And all of these uh, leave footprints while producing different characteristics on the network traffic. So previous studies used these characteristics to find website fingerprints that are unique to each website. The attack model assumed a man-in-the-middle adversary running between the victims and the Tor network. In this case, the attacker knows the source of the network traffic and try to infer the destination website. It extracts feature of the network characteristics such as packet size, timing, and direction and using machine learning uh, techniques to classify uh, these uh, feature vectors to specific web page. But what about a remote attacker? Uh, in previous uh, models uh, required a man in the middle attacker access to the victim network. But, uh, what, but what can we do if the attacker is somewhere in the web and does not have this access? So our attack model exploits a hardware last level cache contention leakage measured while surfing different web pages. Our attack can work under different scenarios such as unprivileged application on the same phone, 
a program running on the same cloud hardware and a JavaScript advertisement running on the same or different browser with, this, with the website. While the victims saw a website, the adversary collect cache contention traces using prime and probe technique. And due to different website characteristics, the cache traces have unique fingerprints to a website. In our study, we discussed the cases of unprivileged na native app and a remote JavaScript attacker. So uh, first, let's see how does it work. First of all, the attacker injects a, a malicious advertisement without any privileges to the uh, victim's browser uh, on the same uh, machine. Then the victim uh, renders a web page, his uh, favorite secret web page on his machine. And while rendering it, it leaves a cache contention footprints uh, on the last level cache. Then the advertisement um, uh, check the cache contention over time using prime and probe and uh, extracting the cache contention vector and send it to the uh, remote uh, server. This server uh, make a machine learning uh, uh, and use machine learning algorithm uh, to identify which uh, website uh, has this uh, uh, cache contention footprints and it and, and identifies the secret web page. So what did we do? We collected more than uh, 20 data sets, 100 traces for each of 100 websites. We trained a deep learning model and got uh, lots of results. Uh, these are one of them, accuracy on Firefox 87%, accuracy on Tor browser 47%, out of 1% base rate, uh, which is 1% of random guess. So it, uh, way above base rate. But the most important outcome of the, this work is that reducing timer resolution does not eliminate the threat. And nowadays we have lots of countermeasures reducing the timer resolution on the web browsers. But uh, this work uh, showed that uh, reducing it, uh, it uh, does not eliminate the threat of uh, uh, website fingerprinting. So uh, first of all, uh, the prime, let's talk about prime and probe uh, and the cache contention measurement. Uh, in Prime and Probe, the adversary tries to measure last level cache contention to learn victims process characteristics. It allocates a cache sized buffer and measures time. When the victim's process access the data in the last level cache memory, uh, the probe time is longer. So the, the adversary can retrieve the frequency of the process access to its data, and this can fingerprint the process. Uh, let's see some uh, intuition uh, of uh, why should it work. These are, are traces of uh, cache contention uh, while uh, uh, surfing a different web pages. Uh, this is a measurement using a native app attacker, which is a, a program uh, running on the same hardware, not JavaScript. And uh, we can see uh, uh, the X axis is the time and uh, the darker color indicates a higher uh, cache contention in this time slot. So uh, these are several um, uh, web page visit. The first three are Wikipedia, the next three are GitHub, the next are Oracle. Uh, we can see that uh, within each website, the traces are very similar, although they have a different uh, uh, it's from different uh, renderings. Uh, and between these uh, websites, uh, the, cache tra the cache contention traces are very uh, different. So if we can see it with our eyes and can distinguish between a three web page, so a deep learning model uh, can probably uh, distinguish between uh, more of them and find these uh, fingerprints. So 
let's go to our uh, uh, to our challenge the the largest challenge of us are, is uh, overcoming the uh, low timer resolution so in 2014 uh, in Spine the Sandbox, uh, they used the uh, one nanosecond timer resolution JavaScript timer to perform privacy attacks. Nowadays, due, uh, due to um, attacks like Spectre and Meltdown, web browser vendors started to reduce the timer resolution, uh, like Chrome with the 0.1 millisecond, Safari with 1 millisecond, Firefox 2 millisecond, and Tor a hundred millisecond of timer resolution with which actually makes uh, all of these make a, a regular prime and probe attack useless so we had to uh, overcome this uh, low timer resolution our solution was divided into two cases uh, the first one uh, on uh, regular mainstream mainstream browsers uh, we measured the cache contention over the whole last level cache and rather than a specific cache set like previous works. So uh, instead of a two dimensional vector, uh, which is uh, the cache sets of uh, contention on cache sets over time, we have one dimensional vector of contention over the whole last level cache over time. Uh, so uh, we reduced our uh, measurement resolution, but uh, also made the attack, uh, the prime and probe attack measurable. The solution for extreme uh, low timer resolution like Tor browsers, we use a different solution. Uh, in this case, instead of measuring the time it takes to do prime and probe over the whole last level cache, we counted how many times we probe all of the cache sets in uh, last level cache in 100 millisecond. So instead of resolution over time, we got resolution over count. Uh, the lower uh, count, uh, the, uh, the lower count is higher, uh, indicates higher cache contention. And uh, the higher count uh, indicates uh, low cache contention. Now we can uh, use, the, use our uh, cache attack on uh, browsers with a low timer resolution and even on Tor browser. So our method uh, was uh, a machine learning methods. First of all, we collected data of the cache traces while surfing a list of sensitive websites several traces for each website. Then we train a machine learning model that learns the differences between these websites. And then we uh, evaluate the model accuracy using tenfold cross-validation method uh, to minimize the bias from the data set size. This is the uh, uh, whole the process we did. Uh, and. Uh, uh, the data collection setup was on one collection host. We had a browsing agent that uh, browsed to uh, uh, 100 web pages uh, repeatedly. And while uh, rendering these uh, web pages, uh, we had a cache attacker that uh, collect the uh, cache contention uh, over time using uh, uh, prime and probe. And uh, then the attacker send, sent the, uh, these traces to a remote server. Also to compare previous works that uh, use the network traces and not the uh, cache contention traces, we, uh, uh, we used a man in the middle network traces, tracer tracking the network traces related to the cache contention traces. So we have for the same, uh, uh, web page uh, render the uh, network trace uh, along the uh, uh, cache contention trace and we can uh, compare uh, these uh, methods on uh, related data. Uh, we had lots of data set. It was six months of uh, data collection, uh, lots of uh, data in uh, different uh, 
settings. We have the native application and JavaScript attack network characteristics versus cache attack, different browsers, different operating systems. And we had uh, two, um, two scenarios of closed world and open world data set. In closed world data set, uh, the, the attack model has a set of 100 uh, web pages that it assumed there are only one in the world. So the model should distinguish only between these uh, sensitive websites. But unfortunately, our world is more complicated and there are more non-sensitive websites than sensitive. So uh, uh, we had the open world data set too. So uh, uh, it had uh, also a uh, hundred labels of sensitive websites. And we had more, uh, lo lots of more uh, websites that are not known by the attacker because that's how the world work. Uh, and the classifier should distinguish between 101 uh, labels, which 100 of them are from the closed world. And uh, the last one is the open world settings of uh, unknown web page. Also, we had uh, data sets with uh, network countermeasures. Uh, the countermeasures proposed against uh, network uh, website fingerprint attack actually tried to reduce the leak from the trace, network traces. Um, we also used the attack with uh, uh, these uh, countermeasures. Uh, the most used network traffic, uh, the most used uh, network traffic uh, uh, fingerprint leaks uh, uh, are from the packet size and the direction. Uh, so when we're taking uh, the countermeasures for the, uh, these uh, features, uh, we had uh, the packet pending and the traffic molding, which uh, negate these uh, features. And while we're taking uh, these features on the extreme case, uh, the uh, network fingerprints classifiers uh, accuracy go to the base rate and uh, but slightly affecting the uh, cache contention uh, 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 fingerprints uh, we use. The model we used is a, a convolutional neural network uh, it extracts automatic features using local filters. It's like, uh, uh, it's like the models used to identify uh, photos and uh, pictures, but in one dimension. In, but in one dimension. And uh, we, we had to reduce the dimensionality of the uh, input vector. So we use the down sampling uh, 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 down sampling layers. And uh, we know that the deeper network, then the layers can find more complex patterns over previous layers. So we use the three layers there. And uh, output uh, and the output vector is the probability of each website uh, label. Another model we use is uh, LST, a model long short term memory. So we used the feature extracted using the convolutional blocks of uh, the convolution layer and uh, max pooling, uh, down, sampling, uh, down sampling layers, and uh, feed it to uh, the LSTM, which uh, takes these uh, local features over the uh, cache contention trace and uh, find temporal features uh, and uh, over these uh, local features and also classifies uh, these uh, uh, feature vectors to uh, the label of uh, different web pages. Well, uh, these are the results of uh, the open world scenario, which is the hardest scenario. We have uh, uh, fr from a precision of 80% of uh, of uh, in uh, the safari to uh, 
95% uh, on uh, Chrome on Linux, and we have the 58% uh, on Tor browser uh, precision. We had also lots of uh, results in this paper, so if you want to see all of these, uh, you should uh, refer to the uh, paper. Uh, so, after we show that the attack is practical, now we show an effective countermeasure that we proposed. Uh, the countermeasure is cache activity masking. It's actually like the attack, but in the countermeasure side. side. Uh, we allocated a cache sized buffer and access every cache line in loop. And uh, this uh, made the uh, masking on the uh, uh, on the attack. So uh, it uh, it has five percent slowdown, but uh, it's admissible uh, if you look on uh, the regular uh, Tor browser performance. It's uh, very admissible. So the results on the countermeasure as Tor browser classifier model uh, accuracy uh, drop to a uh, base rate uh, and the attack uh, uh, doesn't work while using it on Tor browser, but uh, regular browser classifier accuracy drop uh, about uh, 10%. So it still makes uh, the attack uh, uh, it still makes the, the attack possible and the question about the countermeasure for mainstream browsers is still open. So in summary, we had unprivileged code running on the victim's machine, beated the low timer resolution, and we propose an effective uh, countermeasure. And uh, the most important thing, all of the data, thousands of machine learning of uh, cache contention traces and in a lot of settings and uh, with the network associated traces are freely available. Uh, and also uh, the trained models in Python, uh, you can uh, uh, reproduce these results and use these, uh, uh, use these uh, cache contention vectors along the network traces in your research and uh, have fun with the data. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Anandoli, uh, for this amazing informative session. Uh, I'm sure our participant must have found some important knowledgeable inputs from it. So hello all. Now, if you have any questions, you can ask it in the chat window. Does anyone have any question? They can type it in the chat window. Uh, hello, Anatoly? Yeah. Yeah, okay, we got one question. Hope you can see it in chat window from Abhishek. Okay, I can see. I can't see this uh, question in the uh, chat. Oh, maybe. It's from Abhishek. Oh, okay. Okay, I'll do. Okay, I have, got it. okay, I have this uh, chat. Uh, what all things should we keep in mind while uh, developing eth ethical hacking skills? Okay, okay. Uh, actually, I'm not um, uh, I'm not an expert in hacking stuff, but. Uh, uh, I think uh, 
Okay. Um, sure, so I, I think that uh, this question is not. Uh, uh, is not uh, yeah, it's a very generic question, basically. Uh, it's not related uh, to topic, I guess. I don't think okay. that I can. Uh, yeah. So, no issue, I guess. Uh, uh, we don't have any more questions. So, thank you all again for your participation for the today's webinar session. We have our upcoming webinar on securing ICS CADA systems by Dr. Farooq Kazi on 4th of July at 12 p.m. So we look forward to seeing you all there and we wish you a very great help. Thank you all for your participation. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you, Anatoly. Thank you very much.